Hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Star Trek Online stream. Uh, my name is Mike Fatum. I am your community manager, also known as Ambassador Kel, and I am joined by these fine gentlemen who can introduce themselves. My name is Mauricio, and I'm a senior artist. My name is Thomas uh, Maroney. I'm a lead uh, ship artist and UI artist for Star Trek Online. Cool. Welcome, guys. How you feeling? How you doing today? Doing good. Pretty good. Good. Yeah. Good. Doing you you cool excited? Stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's okay. There's only a couple thousand people watching. That's fine. <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> All right. Well, let's dive right into the ships then. Uh, as you can see, I have already loaded us up with this beautiful Miradorn Raider, uh, which I have named the Maroni. So we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to well, I didn't model that one. Oh well, then I, I I switched them go then. To, go go to ESD and rename it. Uh, okay. Or I could not do that. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to have to cool start over, though, in 10 minutes when, when everybody expects us to be here. Well, we just <laughs> tweeted out that we are going out live, so <laughs> okay. uh, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> we, we're going to be playing with this ship for longer than 10 minutes. Yeah. So. Uh, so Double roll. <laughs> what? Double roll. Yeah, barrel, double tap. That's probably my favorite thing about these ships. Oh my yes. god! <laughs> yeah, oh my god, that's amazing. I do because I was testing one of the pilot ships the other day, and the quote unquote barrel roll was just like a slide. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's awesome. We'll do that again. Sprint forward. And yeah, as forward. I crash into a space dock. Uh, oh god, no! Why? Yeah. Who's flying this thing? Double tap back, it'll just kind of like skate back. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's really cool. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, so talk. Go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say I I love. Going forward, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, going forward too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's nice. It's just satisfying to have pilot maneuvers on your mm -hmm. ship. Yes, mm -hmm. so tiny. Yeah. Uh, so, talk to us a little bit about the ship. What was the, the process like of uh, taking this guy from, you know, this episode of TNG into the world of Star Trek Online? Well, first of all, is trying to find the best reference out there. And, uh, <laughs> I guess it isn't going to get old. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's the most important thing about making a ship, especially when you're doing something that's been on a show. Yeah. So we were really lucky to find the um, the actual pictures from uh, Christie's. Um, what is that called? The auction. The auction. Yes, it was yeah. an auction oh. about the ship. They auctioned off the model. Yes, this ship uh, sold for sold for about four thousand dollars. The oh, actual wow. model, really big, um, really good looking <laughs> ship actually. Yeah, there was a, a massive. Uh, auction that Christie's did a few years ago um, and they sold a bunch of models and props and things from Star Trek and I think it ended up earning like uh, I don't remember the number I shouldn't say but like <laughs> millions of dollars more than they were expecting or something like yeah. that or like a million dollars more than they were expecting uh, and and one of the one of the nice things about the auction was that um, course, it was open yeah. to the public and so a bunch of people went and took pictures of models that they couldn't afford, <laughs> and then they posted the pictures online. And so there's um, tons of reference yeah, material all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is good because this is actually pretty. Um, you know, it's it was only seen in one episode of TNG, and then it was also seen in an episode. The Gambit of, episode. Yeah, the Gambit. Yeah. Uh, and it was also seen in DS9. So, um, but it's a uh, you know it's not one of the the most iconic Star Trek ships, but it's it's pretty neat. Well, it's a really interesting and unique design within the Star Trek universe. Like you know, most ships are um, they don't have these like curvy bits and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, was it a, a challenge to uh, design something that looks or not to model something that looks this different? A little bit because I've been kind of used to a specific shape designs, oh. and this one it's it's funny because I remember looking at it at, at, at halfway and I'm like. Kind of looks like a Star Wars ship. Yeah, <laughs> it does a little bit. Yeah, it, yeah I could see this. Even being if you like zoom a... in to the to the textures and stuff, you added a lot of weathering. Yeah, the the, the weathering and the texture. This stuff was done with a stuff sense designer. Um, ZBrush. No, no ZBrush. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the whole thing is very blocky. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's really yeah. cool. Oops. That was the, most of the time we don't really put this much dirt. Right. On a, on a well, ship. it's yeah. not. I mean, most Star Trek ships are clean. You know, they, yes. they take a yeah. power washer every this... every month or something. But uh, <laughs> since this is a, a pirate ship, it needed to look a little more worn. Uh, Char. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, Gabriel Fonseca wanted to know. I think what this is right here. This is the uh, the pilot maneuver meter. Yeah, so that yeah, that it's... charges up every time yes, I yeah. uh, I do a pilot maneuver. So if I just tap this, you see it goes down and then it starts yep. charging up again to let me know when I can do it again. Uh, so yeah, um, it, it's cool because it's it's. 
like you said, most of our ships in the game are very military, very clean, and this is like a scoundrel ship. You can yeah, see that right. it's it's it's, it's a lived a life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that about it. Uh, one of the other neat things that Mauricio did when he was building the ship is the stripes are actually oh, yeah, uh, that's customizable, right. so you can change the color yeah, of those want, stripes. Yes. To oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. In the show, there it's uh, the actual show. It's it's this color. It's has like well, a maybe I will go to a ship tailor then. Yeah. Hold on one second. I don't want them to see me do this. Not that I would ever hide anything from you guys, but I'm gonna hide this from you. <laughs> so I don't have to fly all the way to Earth space dock to do it. Hi, Alex. <laughs> You're my savior. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. All right, and back to gameplay. Okay, so let's take a look at customizing this bad boy then. Um, so just in the colors. Yeah. yeah. The color, yeah. yeah so we can take this to... Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, so any know. color you want there. Uh, you can Bright red. Or, well, what color... Here, tell me what color you want the ship to be in chat, guys. First person to give me a color gets the color in chat. In the meantime, I'm going to be sliding around this. <laughs> Red? Someone said red. Red it yeah, is. We're going to go red, with the brightest red. Is red is a good choice. Oh, that's, right. that's, that's yeah, nice. That's pretty sick. That's nice. I think you can do, yeah. You can so do some the, patterns on it, too. Yeah, you can throw different patterns on the... On oh, wow, the that changed everything. Yeah, because uh, how patterns work is they um, are applied to different sections of the hull. So if you change Oh, okay, that, so I go back to Mirador, and yeah, there we go. Yeah, so yeah. if you change that gray to, to blue or something... And then um, I can do patterns that'll pop yeah, up yeah, somewhere. Yeah, so you were to see that now. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> well, it's it's again, it's all about how the the textures are yeah. marked. Pay no attention to the amount of zen I have, by the way. <laughs> Oops, what's that? No one knows what that is. Go away. <laughs> all right, now we've got a lovely red Miradorn ship. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Um, let's see. Uh, pink. Oh, someone said pink and blue before someone said red. I apologize. Uh, too, pink, bad. too bad we uh, we jumped for red. <laughs> All right. It already has pink on the thrusters. It's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at those thruster visuals too. Is that a uh, Chris a, Menard special? I think it's a trait. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's a trait that's going on right now. Okay. I'm not sure. Cool. It's funny because the other ship that you're going to talk about, it also has a very similar color on the, mm -hmm. on the thruster. Yeah, <laughs> that's just how it was. Uh, <laughs> got to make it look like it looked like. They liked that magenta. Lighting in the in the nineties. Yeah, that was that was, that was pretty <laughs> popular Interesting back color then. Interesting choice in the nineties. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all loved our purples and bright blues and Stranger Things colors, basically. <laughs> uh, someone says they're looking at the front and seeing a Breen helmet. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Which is in no way a Princess Leia bounty hunter helmet <laughs> ever. <laughs> Definitely not. Well, this was. I mean, it was. This was designed after Princess Leia, but the Breen actually came after the ship. The, you don't see a brain until the Dominion War in DS9. Yeah, I remember. And this ship is from TNG. So. Yeah, so this is, this came first. This yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I found more screenshots on TNG than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, let's take this baby out into a combat zone somewhere so we can show off the heavy torpedoes amongst other lo lovely things that it does in the sensor baffling. Look at that. Look at that. Can you pilot maneuver into the ESD doors? I don't see why not, but I think it'll stop you when you hit the doors. <laughs> I don't think you can like magically fly through the map into the into Earth Space Dock, although that would be hilarious. <laughs> Mauricio, was this your um, was this your first like cannon ship that you had built? I believe so. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. cool. I think so. So how, how's the process? No, the actually, the vengeance. The oh, vengeance, right? Vengeance yeah. is you. Yeah. Mauricio built the, the, yeah. the vengeance from Into the Darkness. Nice. And Which I love that ship. Yeah. Hate that, that movie, but I love that ship. <laughs> I love working on that thing. I added so many polygons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that turned out great, though. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think of all the ships we've done since then, and this might be the second cannon ship you've done, though. Because you've done a lot of ships you design yourself. Um, well, I remember Dean uh, doing that first. Oh, the Galar, right? You rebuilt the Galar yeah, glass yeah. for in the Kelvin. That's true. Yeah, it was cool working on that material, actually. Uh, somebody wanted to see the console layout and bridge officers while we're doing this, so I can show you guys that. All that detail is in the, uh... Oh god, slow down. Okay, first we're gonna fight these guys, then I'm gonna show you the console layout <laughs> and stuff. Why does that big eye? 
Oh, that's the uh, what a deep space encounter looks like. I see you. I can't believe that the first thing Sauron says in the Lord of the Rings movie is a pun. Like, it's just... Because he's just, I see you. It's the first thing he says. And he's just a giant eye. Uh, Tolkien was kind of like a language dork, though. Like. Someone is congratulating me on having duty officers. Uh, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, is that a new development since the last name? Uh, well, because, you know, these are test characters that I fly these streams on, so sometimes yeah. they don't have anything. All right, here's the bo- the uh, bridge officer layout. So you can see we've got... Um, I think that's what... That's Intel. And yeah. then there's three universals. Like the Intel Universal. Yeah. And a pilot commander. Yeah. Which is neat. And then this is your console layout. So two engineering, three science, and five tactical. Along with the sensor baffle, which we'll show off in a minute. As I blow up this probe. Oh, that's cool. We <laughs> got some, uh, some neat weapons on this ship. Those are uh, creature wave disruptors. <laughs> um, which have led to so many archer jokes oh, on sure. my Twitter. It actually is canon, though. There is that, well, Krieger waves are canon. There's, there's an episode of Next Generation where uh, Riker visits uh, an experimental space station where they're working on Krieger waves and gets roped into this, like, murder plot. Uh, and they recreate the murder scene and the holodeck and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Um, but Vaguely. we pulled the, the name Kree. So this this uh, privateer lockbox, right? That's the yeah yeah. Uh, that's it's all based on just random one off things from TNG. And so for the weapon type, we wanted to, to honor that too. So we used the Krieger wave disruptors from that episode. I think it, uh, it's like point of view or something. I don't remember the name of it exactly. Okay. But, um, I want to call out quickly these uh, this dual warhead launcher because this thing just looks cool. There we go. Nope, those are not good. Fire the head will work. I just love the explosion on that. That is so nice feeling. Um, so what made us decide on the, uh, the nerd one? Well, so... Good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, again, everything, we want everything in the box to be from TNG, and we wanted uh, to have a sort of... You know, we've already done... Lock boxes for Cardassians. We've already done Romulan things. We have the Romulan faction. We have the Klingon faction. Uh, so we've got all these things that we've already used. So we needed to look, kind of dig pretty deep <laughs> in the repertoire of TNG and ships and like what kind of things for the future. And so we figured out that like, well, the thing that could that tie all this stuff together from TNG would be you know, things that like mercenaries and pilots and pirates and navy wells. Uh, use and we'll make it like a pirate, you know, privateer block box. And so uh, when we decide on that, the Miradorn, this ship, well, it wasn't called Miradorn Greater in the show, it was just uh, a random ship that uh, the um, pirate treasure hunter Galen, you know, yeah. was the car's name, it was Moran? Uh, okay, there you go. Yeah, Moran. The uh, guy who was the one of the finalists for Riker, right? Is that, is that that episode? Never mind. Maybe I'm confused. No, uh, he's an alien. He's oh, an alien okay. who has he has these like collars on everybody, pain collars. That oh yeah. Make them do their do his will. Anyway, um, so in this episode, it was just the ship that he used, but he was clearly a pirate and a smuggler and a treasure hunter, and and uh, and then later in DS9, they used this model again, but they actually gave it a name. They called it the Miradorn. Yep. Uh, yeah, Worshipper, like the, raider, or whatever. The twins. Yeah. So uh, we just took that name. And there's no reason Baran couldn't have bought a Miradorn attack craft, you know, at a uh, at a used starship sale or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Um, somebody asked if uh, uh, why this ship can fire two torpedoes at once and the Defiant can't. As I understand it, the Defiant is getting a heavy weapon slot eventually, right? So if you have the Miradorn heavy weapon, you can put it on the Defiant. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy weapons can can go on any. Uh, any of the experts that have a heavy weapon as far as my concern. Yeah, and I, I believe the tier 6 is fine. We'll be getting more. So the, the dual warhead launcher is a, is a heavy weapon. Heavy weapon. Okay. So it's this, you could put this guy on any ship uh, that you want that has a heavy weapon slot. Uh, the other thing I want to show off, this is the. That's the photonic shot play. Where's my sensor? Here's my sensor. Which is the new console for this ship, which as you can see right here, I'll hold up the tooltip for a second. 
That's 15% critical chance, 33% critical severity, and placates your foe for 10 seconds, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And it looks awesome, so that is a new concept for the bad boy. So what's since you've designed for both canon and uh, non-canon ships, what's the design process as I explode again in your head? Like how is it different to you know to bring a ship to life that's been on the show yes, before? It is different, yes, yes. How, how is it different? Well, we can give you a little more freedom as as you are actually modeling and digging into actual day-to-day -day, uh, creation. Mm -hmm. Then you're talking about making a non a non, non a non canon ship. ship it's yes. more for him, yeah. Yeah, you might get, you might be able to get away maybe like with moving something here or mm -hmm. putting some more detail over there. Um, so yeah, it's I mean it definitely it's a different kind of process, especially the, the way the way like my brain works. You know? Yeah, um, and also it's completely different when you actually uh, actually doing the concept designs for for ships too. Yeah, because I mean sometimes we get like concept from actor, and you know. Sometimes you don't actually see like the shots from the back. Oh yeah, you only see the one, the one angle. So that will just give you a bit of freedom to what to do. With. Whereas with a cannon ship, you have to go through the episode and see all the different angles of it. Yeah, yeah. Or look at the model from the option. Cannon ships, uh, they require more research. I feel like, for me personally, they take a lot longer because with uh, when you're making a non-canon ship, you just make it so it looks good. Yeah. But with a canon ship, it's like, well, no, that 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 door is like supposed to be three three feet to the left or something, and so you have to go in and tweak and massage things and, and make sure that you get it right, which uh, just adds a lot of time. Yes. Uh, right, because you uh, you don't have you have photographs of models maybe, and maybe you have orthographic renders of a CG canon ship if it's from CG. But in a lot of those cases, you're, you're, you kind of have to manually compensate for perspective, perspective and for uh, yeah. So you don't. So, so so you can like I I fall into the trap sometimes where I'm modeling something. Like, oh, that looks right, and then I tab over to a different reference photo and now the proportions are completely wrong. <laughs> I need something that, you know, like, it, I was thinking about it when I was looking at the drawings about, you know, um, CG models versus uh, actual models for model making, you know? A lot of, a lot of these things were kit bashing, kit bashing from my, uh, finding parts from other kit models that they were used on long time ago. And, uh, for something for like this shape right here, a lot of the edges are curved. Because model makers will always keep their things either with a eraser or, or with sandpaper. So that's something that I was I was trying to accomplish with this ship. With polygons. <laughs> yeah, with polygons. Which yeah. actually means that you have to add more. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. It might look really Curve. simple from this angle, but right. when you're getting there, you actually so you that kind of, that you can kind of see how it catches the light. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the way it's more shape is totally into it. Yeah. Actually, love how the damage looking in, yeah. in the crevices of the ship. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, I, but he had one! Oh, oh, 1% life. 1%! <laughs> um, Nicely done. Yeah. Good fighting. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, sorry, thank you. Uh, somebody asked, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, keep your shields up, Kel. Thanks. That's good <laughs> advice. I'll try and take it. <laughs> keep your shields up. <laughs> Alright. What time are we at? Okay, it's only been like 10 minutes. That's great. Let me see if I can finish this thing off. Hey! Nice. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Uh, someone wanted to see the traits, so let's go through those. Uh, let's see. You can get plus five accuracy rating at level one. You can get plus five defense rating at level two. Plus ten kinetic damage, plus ten energy damage. Percent, not ten. That'd be weird. <laughs> plus two percent critical severity. And then the final unlock, which is in the blog, is you get... Plus 20 armor preservation with weapons while flanking, which is great with a ship like this because since you can do these kind of maneuvers and you can zoom around, oh god, it's a cube. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, you can get a lot better damage, um, you know, with your cavalcade of weapons. Uh, so, for example, move over around here. 
I don't know how you flank a horde in Cuba. Well, I, I'm <laughs> guessing. I mean, yeah, it's all got the same sides, but I'm guessing if I attack it from the no, side, it'll give me some extra damage. They say in our game they have a front, but yeah, in real life they don't. IRL. Yeah. <laughs> In the really real world of the board, this thing is gonna kill me so hard. Yeah, I need, I need help. I need help, and I'm not getting help. I'll be fine. All right, you guys. Uh, I'm looking over at the questions in chat. Oh god, if they back to it. it's all over there. I'm gonna track her to board cube back. That'll help. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you guys have any questions uh, for? Uh... Oh, it looks like I'm using the default shields. I probably am. Let's see. Oh yeah, using the default of white. Default gear, yeah, Mark Ten. Mark 10. Oh god, that's why I'm dying so hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the problem with running this on a test game, I should get the next time we do one of these, I should get Levens to build me a character or Spartan to build me a character. Right. Um, and then uh, we can go from there. But <laughs> that's not showing off the ship, Thomas. <laughs> that's just showing off me hitting spacebar. <laughs> I, I, I did okay. It's at like 22%. It's shields are healing real fast. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, does the ship have to have commander pilot to get the pilot maneuvers? No, you can have... The ship just has the pilot maneuvers, right? Well, no, what he's asking are... Uh, well, I don't know if this is what he's asking, but, but the answer is only ships with commander pilot seats can have pilot maneuvers. Right. Um, that is true. Yes. And the ship has... And yeah, there isn't like a special console you can we, get. We call yeah. these primary special relationships. Yeah. So these and then the, the pilot bundle, and I think the Raider, the Kelvin Klingon Raider, um, yeah, that's is also a pilot ship. Yes, it is. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. This is not a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shooting you. I'm shooting you. And, tra and tractor beams. <laughs> right. And their tractor beams are stronger because they're green. So yeah. if, you, um, if you use uh, hazard emitters, that should mm -hmm. cleanse the uh, tractor beams. Oh, uh, okay. I think you know, I have really somebody who has hazard emitters on. Let me switch that up. It's then. a real good, real good power for fighting the board. Attack of this team will remove their um, boarding parties. Uh, yeah. I swear I had somebody who had hazard. It's the one that looks like fire, right? Yep. Yep, here it is. There okay. they are. Try that out. Don't fly away from me. Don't fly oh god, it's fully healed. Me, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> somebody, somebody says this is this is good evidence why every escort should have pilot maneuvers. I, I uh, now I kind of want to see one of those giant escorts with pilot maneuvers flipping around the place. I should also, if you have a base in your room, I can go to the Okay, let's get down. I also just need better shields yeah. and health, and uh, here we go. Cleanse! You lied to me, Thomas. I lied. No, do the base in your room. Okay. Okay. I hit two next time. Okay. Oh, then this thing? Things that I know about this game. <laughs> so, um. The, uh, Mo has been watching this on YouTube stream. Yes. Because you've been, Mo, yes, as you've you been watching all day, yeah. Yeah. and then you, you've been doing it through like your first time when we were right all these stuff. Yes. Because you did Enterprise. Yep, I started with Enterprise. And the did you, you haven't done the original series yet, right? Not yet. Okay. I got started with that actually. I haven't either, so it's, it's um, not too bad. <laughs> it's a different pace. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's definitely. Well, I mean, they had fewer commercial breaks. So they they have like 50 minutes of actual show instead of 40 minutes or whatever it is yeah. by now. Do we have, um, somebody asked, is there a special bridge for this guy? Uh, uh, they just use the gen generic um, uh, alien bridge. Okay, so no. But you, so you went to DS9 and TNG and Enterprise. Did you watch Voyager 2? Yeah, I watched Voyager. all that stuff, yeah. yeah. And that was all like, like uh, since you started on the SCO team, right? But you've been yeah. on the team for a year and a half, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's about right. Um, so, yeah. yeah, and uh, so I don't know what's what's your favorite Star Trek show so far. Um, well, it's funny because you know I finished um, Voyager, and then I started watching 
DS9 It's interesting. It's a Very subject that Star Trek usually doesn't. It tackles in different ways, but yeah, yeah. it's it's it, it definitely. A, I, I remember the first time I tried to watch uh, TOS. They have they start with that episode. That's uh, um, the woman who replaces uh, Bones's like girlfriend or something like that, and Spock mm-hmm. ends up just smashing her in the face repeatedly to prove she's not human, <laughs> <laughs> which is a weird place to start. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I don't know. If you, I don't think I remember that. Uh, that sounds really very violent. Oh man, lots of people asking about. Uh, well, not lots of people. One person asking about um, updating Deep Space Nine. Uh, no news to announce there yet. Um, let's see. Yeah, you're going to see the explosion animation for the ship a lot. I know. I, it's because I'm great at this game. Really, really good. <laughs> uh, someone was asking about the uh, the barrel roll animation on other ships. Uh, yeah, there's lots of other ships that can do that. Uh, we mentioned earlier the Kelvin climb, Timeline, Bird of Prey. Uh, the, most of the ships in the pilot bundle can do that. Well, if you yeah, if you have a pilot pilot specialization, there's an ability called Rock and Roll that will let you uh, barrel roll your ship. Which you can. Uh, which for a little while you could put on the Enterprise J, which was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Now you can still put it on the J, but it doesn't actually flip. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm still st- doing steadily worse and worse with this. <laughs> Somebody wants our audio to be a little louder. Uh, okay. That's the loudest I can make it. So we can just we'll talk, talk louder. louder. We can do that. We're, we're very we're very soft spoken people, <laughs> video game developers. Uh, someone asked if the ships have a two piece console bonus. Yes, and that was neglected to be put on the blog this morning when this first went out. I apologize for that. It is on the blog now, so if you go there, you can get um, you can find out what that bonus is. All right. So temporal ships you worked on. You worked on the thirty first century temporal um, dreadnought cruiser. Yeah, that's the one that did the roll to. Uh huh. <laughs> Someone wants to know if the Voth Fortress ship can barrel roll. Uh, God, I hope Probably not. Probably not. Although that big. would be hilarious. <laughs> the Voth Fortress ship isn't actually a ship. It's a map. <laughs> yeah, it's a map. It's a piece of environment, you know. The, uh, the Enterprise J, even before it was a playable ship, it was still on it. Ships are basically costumes, is what they call them. Um, and the Enterprise J was a costume. It was still had all the map points and nodes and things that regular ships have, so it was a ship. We just didn't, we hadn't given the players yet. But we did. And uh, wackiness is here. Yeah. I, I still love all the videos of like five Enterprise J's running different queues and trying to fit. <laughs> I can't even really touch the I, I can't either. Uh, Most players couldn't it was, reach uh, it. Was a, it was certainly a surprise, but we had a lot of fun with it. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the Enterprise. It is indeed. Oh, no. oh, I can't. Why isn't it targeting it? Oh, it's going so take well. To actually decide on the actual side. Um. There's some back and forth. Uh, ultimately, we just decided to go with the cannon size for it. We did a lot of well, we did a lot of testing, and it, it seemed to work okay. Like it's, uh, there were lots of. We were worried it wouldn't work at all, but it actually worked fine. So we just we thought people would be upset if we tried to scale it down. Like yeah, know, the whole point of the ship is that it's huge. It's, so. it's a generation uh, the, ship. The size. So it should be noted, I guess, that the the actual size of the ship was never really discussed or shown in canon. You only see the Enterprise J in a, a computer readout in the background um, when Archer visits the Enterprise J to talk to Daniels, but. Um, Doug Drexler, the guy who designed the ship, um, has posted a lot about it since that episode aired. So there's a lot of information on the ship uh, online that people kind of would expect us to follow, even though really there's not much about its canon. None of the 
you never see the outside of it on camera, so the outside of the ship isn't actually canon. But um, we decided that it would be people wouldn't be happy with the expe expectation and, and seeing you know, everything that's been built up over these years. Especially about the ship that we made, we couldn't really go back on that. We wanted to honor that. It felt to me like it was a way also to push our design yeah. skills. Yeah. And you had a conversation with uh, Doug Drexler on a podcast recently. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That's right, Lacking You. Yeah, Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Doug is a, he's kind of a force of nature. He's really energetic, really passionate <laughs> about Star Trek. And uh, it was a really good time talking to him about you know what, uh, what he values in ship design and, and things. And we, we kind of had similar values of, of thinking about not just how things look, but how they might function, and like the reasoning behind uh, the shapes and the ships and stuff that we make. And so it was a really good time. Yeah. Um, somebody was asking about the twenty third century um, dreadnought. Uh, was that one of you guys who designed that? Uh, Hector, or, or is it Hector. talking about the prototype? Uh, yeah. Dreadnought? Hector Ortiz designed that, and Ian Richards modeled it. For okay. The Atlas class. Yeah. Okay. Cool. They were wondering if it had uh, the Presidio as an inspiration for that guy, but you guys would not know. Uh, well, I mean, we were no, uh, we were in the meetings when we were oh, talking okay. about it. Yeah, uh, the the we were trying. So, um, if you're a really hardcore ship nerd, you've probably heard of like Franz Joseph, uh, the original series technical manuals. Um, we don't actually have the license to use those designs, but they're some of the most popular non-canon uh, original series designs out there. The dreadnought from those books was just basically, it was it had a, a bigger saucer and slightly different engineering hull, and then it had a third nacelle on the back of the ship. So we wanted to make a TOS dreadnought, but we couldn't, literally couldn't use the most popular version of the dreadnought that people would be expecting. So we had to come up with our own angle on it. And so we uh, ultimately decided to, uh, you know, we kind of realized that command ships were pretty big and they were a, a language that we had made in Star Trek Online. It would be fun to take the command ship uh, language arrangement that was new to SEO and actually bring that back from the 25th century to the 23rd century with, uh, with the uh, Atlas. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know why triples are eating your inventory, Eric, but I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> you shouldn't let them breed. Don't, don't put them in the same place with food. Yeah, that's the problem that's, right there. If you have food you leave, in inventory, triples will eat them. They just, they'll just eat it. That's how it yeah. goes. All right. Well, we are, I think, let's actually warp out of here and head back to Earth Space Dock uh, so I can switch to a different ship. Um, somebody asked what your favorite uh, ship, to, your favorite faction to design for is out of the Klingons, Romulans, and, you know, the Federation, I guess. <laughs> hmm. And that's a tricky question because then you know every single uh, race species has its own uh, language. Yeah. Um, I definitely you know there's certain ships that are easier to design for like I think like Romulans because they have a very specific rule of design. But I think Fed uh, Federation probably I think is the trickiest and most interesting ships to design. It's all about balance. It's, there's a lot of precision on every single part. Yeah. At the end, at the end, becomes a work of art. Yeah, I really like doing Federation ships. I like designing them. I've designed a few. Um, that's not my primary job, but every now and then I'll, I'll like, if I have an idea for one, I'll, I'll go to the producer and be like, let me let me design this one. I really want to design this one, and they'll accommodate <laughs> me. Um, I'm trying to remember which one was the last one that I actually did the concept for that I actually. Well, you, uh, so, um... That it's actually in the game. Right, right, right yeah, yeah. Um, the Riemann Escort. You did the concept yeah. for that ship. Oh, um, yeah. The Riemann, and also, now I remember the the Borgman ship. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So, uh, let's see, sorry, somebody was asking, I'm getting lots of uh, designs on how to build my ship so I stop dying so much, which I'm not <laughs> passing on to you guys. Uh, but uh, somebody was asking if there was more uh, Lucari ships coming up. Is that something we are thinking about? I know it's not something that's on the docket right now, but would you guys like to design more I Lucari ships? Uh, that'd be interesting. I don't yeah. know immediate plans, but yeah. you know, who knows what we'll do in the future. 
<laughs> I mean, well, we're always going to be adding chips to the game, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll. Uh, yeah, we could do another one. Uh, Ron Swanson wants to know when these chips are coming to console. Um, I think we're trying to keep a general cadence now of stuff coming out a few weeks and months after. But you know, with the ships, it's it's hard to say. Uh, unfortunately, we can't you know confirm any dates or anything like that. So yeah. it'll come out cool. when it comes whenever, out. Whenever I mean, these are part of the privateer lockbox. So whenever the privateer lockbox comes to console, that's that's you'll get when you get it. Why am I not seeing her space dock in either quadrant? Uh, soul? It's, or no, isn't... Yeah, it, it would be in the beta quadrant. Okay, well then I just uh, go to the alpha quadrant. You can go up to the... Um, oh yeah, I can transform. Yeah. yeah. That's smart. Look at you with your smarts. <laughs> it's basically just going, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I don't think I've never done that. No, really? Warm pump? Yeah. Yeah. It takes you, right, it's fast travel, basically. Yeah. I, I The concept of that is just... Traveling through time, yeah. <laughs> speeds that we don't even understand. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, uh, somebody asked why we have the Enterprise and the Vengeance, but not the Narada. The Narada is freaking gigantic, uh, and we have a kind of Narada in the game. Narada's, yeah, we have ship inspired by the Narada. Um, I'm not sure. Narada's big. I think it's even bigger than the Enterprise J. Yeah, uh, it's big enough to change an entire timeline. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was kind of a one-off. Um, so I can't um, believe you name you name a ship after my last name. Oh, of course, yeah. And then the other one, the Maroni. <laughs> <laughs> we got them backwards. Though. Yeah, I, I totally have them backwards. Names. Actually, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that lovely ship in those shadows. So, Thomas, tell us a little bit about the Husnock warship. The Husnock warship was only seen in one episode, uh, the TNG episode Survivors, which is a really interesting episode um, that I guess I'm going to spoil to you <laughs> now. Um, it's, you know, 25, 30 right, years old, yeah. so you're probably uh, okay. The uh, Enterprise D under Captain Picard goes to a planet named Delta Rana 4, um, and they discover that the Federation colony on Delta Rana was destroyed, except for this, like, little patch of land that looks perfect and pristine and so they beam down there's a house there they meet uh, oh, a man yeah. and his wife and uh, they uh, the survivor titular survivors of the episode and the episode is about a mystery of like why did these two survive when the rest of the colony was destroyed over the course of their investigation this ship shows up and attacks the Enterprise um, and uh, kind of ultimately it ends up being that like uh, the, the the man who survived was actually this like really powerful ancient being um, and he had this pacifist ideology that prevented him from helping the colonists defend uh, themselves from the alien attack uh, before it was too late and then the aliens who were the Husnock which is, this is the Husnock ship. Um, uh, they destroyed the colony. Then this guy got, this guy, Kevin Uxbridge, got real mad, and he uh, kind of thought the Husnock out of existence. He uh, <laughs> willed them to cease to exist. And that was like 50 billion people. So he commits like instant genocide uh, and kills all the Husnock. Um, in STO lore, we're saying that... Uh, even though he killed all the Husnock, their ships and their cities and all their equipment and stuff remained. And so the, uh, the Lobby Crystal Consortium was able to finally decipher the computer controls for these Husnock ships and now are offering them to you at a uh, reasonable price. And if you want to get the backstory on STO and the Husnock, what Twitter should you be going to, Thomas? <laughs> I, run a, I run a Twitter uh, account called at uh, uh, JNI Update. Um, and it's just a fun uh, account that's uh, I like to really like I'm really into world building and kind of look like going in reading kind of between the lines of like things that happen like okay this happened in a Star Trek episode or this happened in an STO mission but like if you think about that what happened there would be like years of fallout like politically and yeah. legally and all that right and uh and what would that fallout be? And so the J, uh, J and I update is um, 
is sort of like a, you know, if you take thing, these things to happen seriously, what are the consequences exploring that, the history and the, the military, uh, political, all that stuff, technology. It's a, a lot about um, giving hard stats. We have the in-game stats, which are all about balance and, you know, and, and um, you know, just this is how it works as a, a game, as a part of the game. But like giving stats, like uh, you know, this is the how many kilocochrons the warp core is rated. And, <laughs> you know, super hard, like, uh, like uh, the kind of stats. stuff that fans crave, but we can't yeah, necessarily like put RPG, in the game. It's 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 an in-universe Twitter account. And so today I posted a bunch of tweets on that account about the Husnock and what happened in the Husnock after the Husnock Empire after they all disappeared, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's fun to take threads like that and we're really good at doing that in STO of you know this one little thing that happened in the show and only got one episode and then expanding that out they mentioned and the Zen Kethi once in one episode and now we're going to talk about him for yeah <laughs> you know seasons right exactly so yeah. that's uh that's what we do but it's fun I think uh, our fans enjoy it they enjoy seeing the world fleshed out and I do too yeah I do too um so let's take a closer look at this bad boy what's tell us a little bit about the design of this and what went into it it's a uh, very triangular um, <laughs> <laughs> that it is um this was actually pretty challenging to find reference for um it's only in this episode and actually uh this model was the basis for four or five other different ships in the next generation but it was heavily kit bashed for all of them so yeah the model as it is right now, as it looks right now, when the Christie's auction that, uh -huh. that Mo was mentioning, looks nothing like this ship at all. So uh -huh. I kind of only had the screenshots from the episode to go on. Uh, so I did my best to recreate it from those screenshots. I also looked at the other different versions of the model and like looked and said, oh, that probably didn't change. So I'll, I'll uh, incorporate those details too from the angle because they're just angles of it you don't see in the episode you don't yeah. see the top of the back of the ship you never see that so um so i just kind of relied on some of the other versions of this model the studio model to say okay well those details might not have changed so i'm just going to put those in there and hope that uh, hope that people like the look of it so, so the seven buttholes was your design no, that actually is canon. The, the seven buttholes are canon. Seven buttholes are canon. <laughs> Got it. It looks very specific. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you do see it from like underneath uh, the aft part, but you don't yeah. see the top. Okay. Uh, people are uh, asking if we can see the they can see the bridge. Uh, I'm happy to do that, but I don't. It's this the alien bridge, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's just going to be a bridge that you guys have seen before. Um, it's the yeah. I mean, every now and then we we'll use this bridge for. For these kinds of one-off ships, yeah. Uh, people are somebody. Uh, sorry, not somebody. Corey Desarn asked on Facebook: uh, Is there limitations on like polygon counts or texture limits that you guys run into? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have a polygon count that it sort of depends on how uh, how important the ship is or how I don't know. Yeah, like, if it's that kind of ship, uh, we might go up higher than like around eighteen yeah. k. Yeah. But most ships, I think, are supposed to be around 15, 16. Yeah. And and some even lower, like 12. Mm -hmm. uh, smaller ships ideally would be, like, around 12. And then bigger dreadnoughts and stuff could be... Because you see more of smaller ships. You see more frigates. You see more uh, cruisers and things than, like, dreadnoughts and battleships and stuff. But ultimately, uh, if we're looking at, like, a hero ship, um, like the Vengeance or the Kelvin Constitution... Or like the Axel One, the Axel One refit, those get pretty high. I I think the uh, Sovereign when we when Ian Richards rebuilt the Sovereign, yeah, uh, that's somewhere in the mid to high twenty thousand range. Um, but it looks so good. It looks so good. Every single polyer is yeah. worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And Especially when you're doing prints, mm -hmm. material separation. And that's it. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing, is that we have one texture sheet to work with for the hull. Um, do you want to talk about that? Like how we, you know, we have to unwrap and model to yeah, the um, material? So all our ships have to follow the same layout. So you guys can actually change materials and customize your, your decals and your windows. So we have, you know, specific rules to follow. 
uh, so you know, like, so it's it's uh, good for the players to be able to choose whatever they want. You know, things like just like changing. Um, I think one of the most important things is to be able to change. You know, um, the materials and mm -hmm. the decals. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like basically like making your own um, little model kit at home. You know, I don't know if anybody's into that. I I'm into I, that. I mean, I haven't uh, built one in a while, but. <laughs> I made a sci-fi film in college that was all like all the ships in the the in it were kit bashed versions of mm -hmm. you know things that I bought in Japan Town. Right. Like, you know. Yeah, uh, I've been enjoying watching people on the internet um, building actual models from uh, from scratch. You know, and they they get random things like maybe like a toothbrush and a yogurt container, and they put it together <laughs> and then they spray the whole thing in gray and it looks amazing. <laughs> There are people who do that with Nerf guns too. Like oh yeah, yeah. yeah. oh totally. Guns, and that's so. really cool too. So you know, and I think this is you know like this this Harkno ship, this and you know like the three ver the three yeah. variations that sure are there. Why. Basically, they so they follow those yeah those rules. All right, uh, guys, pick me out some uh, colors and some patterns while we're talking about this. So actually, uh, one thing I do want to point out while you're in here, if yeah. you can you can we just see the side of it just yes. straight? Okay, great. So um, in the episode, The Survivors, you actually see two versions of the ship. One version that looks like this, the first version you see, and then later it comes back, and yeah, and then you see the, the version that has the, the spiky bit on the bottom. So, oh, cool. Uh, yeah. I just, since all I had to do was just take the spiky bit off, <laughs> uh, if you get the Husnock ship, you'll be able to pick between you know, which look you want. All right, I saw yellow and blue first, so we'll do that. I'll go... I am deeply disappointed in your choices of colors. Somebody give me a pattern. Pattern. Gemini. Pink complementary colors. Gemini has been picked. Okay, let's see what that looks like in the real world. It's gonna be real world. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah, that's definitely an attractive starship color set, <laughs> and does not at all look like I made this shit. You know, out now of that cardboard. I see these colors, makes me think that you can actually build a ship with Legos. Uh -huh. Yeah, that look really cool. Yeah. Uh, that would right. be fun. Let's get out of here and uh, see if we can get into a fight. <laughs> but um, you notice that, like on the ship, there are uh, you saw the on the front there are those um, lines, the blue lines or whatever. Uh -huh. um, and and to make we were talking about like unwrapping the ship. That means applying the texture to the model. Yeah. Um, to get those lines though, you have to actually build those lines into the wireframe of the ship. And then unwrap those specific lines into a specific place on the the uh, texture of the ship, which means that our uh, our ships are higher poly than they would be if you were building them in a different method. But because we have to uh, accommodate this single texture template, so those the, see those three lines on the nose. Yeah, there is what I'm talking about. So if you hit F4, I think. No, oh, players can't do this. Hopefully, huh. but hit F4 again. Yeah, okay. So now you, you can, can see how idea. how we how we can like build those lines into so these are this is the actual wireframe of the ship, right? And so you can see how we uh, Dude, this looks like we're it. playing a uh, Atari game yeah, from yeah. the old arcades. That's awesome. Asteroids. Asteroids. <laughs> that was asteroids online. Especially since that ship is a triangle like the asteroids. Yeah. Ship. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so you can see like how how the models cut up to accommodate those different uh, areas on the texture sheet. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh wow. K twelves. <laughs> All right, here we go. There Back go. to the real world. <laughs> All right. Well, Players we, can't do that. We hopefully. got two K textures. While we're flying there, let's take a look at sweet. some of the stuff that this ship has. So, oh, I gotta put some consoles in this bad boy. But this is our, this is the heavy particle focuser array, which I will show you in a minute. It looks yeah. cool as heck. Yeah, I'm uh, really happy with how that turned out. Yeah. Um, but you can take a look at some of the stats there, and I'll we'll go through some of the traits here too while we're flying, although we're almost there. Uh, so plus five accuracy, plus fifteen percent critical severity, plus two point five percent critical chance. Plus 10% kinetic damage and 10% energy damage. Uh, enter the Morrow system. 
And uh, Directed Energy Flux. So uh, Beam Overload and Cannon Rapid Fire gain 25% bonus damage for 15 seconds. So that is super useful, actually. Mm -hmm. Alright. Did we just fly right by? No, we're still going. There's another one over there. There it is. Hard to force. Ah! Turn off the engines so we can turn better. That's how it works in space. Mm -hmm. If you can play this game at render skill 2, that would look pretty amazing. It mm -hmm. would. Uh, well, they're talking about render skill point 2. I, I actually put the game once on accident to uh, render scale 12. Oh, shit. Uh, my computer me. just exploded. Like, there wasn't... Excuse uh, you, me for the French. Uh, <laughs> actually, actually, do render skill point two. Have you seen that? No. Mike, do it. Take okay, it. I'll do it as soon as we're done. That's how we take a screenshot for, for the ships. We do render skill two, but yeah, this is render skill point, point two. two. Yeah, yeah, is this going to be a Nintendo NES game? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. No, it looks great. It's actually a lot of fun. Do it. Do it. Okay, as soon as it loads, I'll do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> People are writing out your tombstone now. Players can't do that, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, We're gonna put that in the code, yes. Yeah. Alright, All right. let's Render do this. Scale, scale dot point two. two. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, this is Wing Commander. Yeah. Uh, Look at that. I feel like back, I'm back in high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like I'm not wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. We actually can probably use point one. Oh my god. Okay, we're going back uh, to reality here. You, actually, if you turn off the NA thing. That's, that's what you need to do. Okay. Is that ATL is zero? Just MSAA zero. MSAA zero. Yeah. And then try to scale one point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's. <laughs> Star Fox is what we got here. Please don't build the ships thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't judge us based okay. on this. <laughs> Alright, but I want to go back to Render Scale 1 so I watch what people this console. Because uh, this console is sweet as heck. That is. This console is actually inspired by the actual episode. Um, it's about this, you know, it's not shit. But it, which turns out to be a production of projection, an illusion created by uh, Kevin X. Bridge to pull the Enterprise D in the movie game. So I um, kind of assumed that it was looking like a real Puzznock ship. Full stop, back up a little bit so you can see the full power of this thing. I get the shot and I want It's the full power of this awesome <laughs> Boom! Boom! Very yeah. cool. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. So they triangulate the weapons. Is that what's going on? It, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god, we went straight to cube. He's on the cube. Why did we go straight to cube? I got 18 seconds. Uh. No, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't think they can do it, but just on the off chance that it's somewhere. Yeah. I don't want them to know. You might have better luck if you just go the other one. Maybe. Why do I turn broadside to torpedoes? That doesn't make any sense at all. Hey, this thing is coming at me that will blow me up. Let me make sure that more of my ship is available this, to hit. This ship's a little more durable than an airborne ship. It's a warship, so yeah. It's, yeah. it's more like a destroyer. Uh, gaming in progress. Uh, yes, you know what to do. Bring me the gifts. What? Well, he's going to gift you. I don't know what you did, but no, apparently no. it was gifable. Players so you're can do gift. that, hopefully. Maybe. That could be it. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a gift. <laughs> Uh, all right, we've only got one charge on it this time, so but we're still gonna bust it out on this cube. But lots of people are um, amused that we still have our teasing audio on. I uh, I wish we could turn it on full time, guys. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Boom! Boom! Yeah, it was cool game. Yeah, into the game. It's a cool game. It's a power. I like I like building these ships that were made with miniatures. You can kind yeah. of tell oh, like, yeah. when you're it building ships. It has a different that, look. Oh my god! They have so like they all have different looks, and there's something about them that feels more functional, just because it had to be a real object, right? So it had to be like structurally sound, even though it was only three feet long or something. Like, yeah, <laughs> there still, still has to be able to exist. Three feet long is pretty big, right? Like, sure, but I'm saying like, like yeah. But I'm saying, like, when you compare that with some of the stuff we make that we design ourselves or that are based on reference from CG models, there's just a completely different feel to it when you're making something that, that somebody actually had to build. Yeah, I, I have so much respect for for the old school of making things. Yeah. Yeah, uh, someone was asking if I need to pay for all the ships that I destroy. Mm -hmm. uh, I do, but it comes out of my Zen budget on this server, which... <laughs> Damn! <laughs> 
Oh man. But yeah, and and well, and that's the other thing is I like that all of the little details in the ship are battleship model parts, or like screws yep. from model kits and stuff, and it's fun modeling that, and yeah. you know, and like putting a new spin on it since we're we're taking it to this other other medium of uh, games. Yeah. That's probably where the seven assholes came from. <laughs> <laughs> from, from like a, a battleship model uh, kit or something. Like yeah. probably they, it's probably, probably bought, the front like, of a Gatling gun or something yeah, like that. Well, it could have been there. like a, they bought six Titanic models. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and those were the smoke stacks or something. I don't know. Yeah. They are on. Thomas denies coming up with buttholes himself. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to actually be able to make a physical model. Oh, my, oh, ma my massive Zen wall was apparently blocked by your face, Thomas. Let's try that again. Oh, sorry. A giant head. Damn! There you go. <laughs> oh god. I'm minimizing everything. <laughs> uh, Alright, hold on. Let's see if I can make this ship a little bit less not loaded. Well, what's a... What's a uh, the, the iconography that, uh, type in a good on. shield that I can put on here. Thomas. Uh, you should know these things. Don't say it out loud, just type it in. Oh. Uh. Oh god. You made it go away. You got room? What? I had I had the console and give item pulled up already. Oh, I don't I don't know. Oh, I'm not know. gonna do it that way. Oh, okay. It's just, yeah. Um. <laughs> you guys want to see a magic trick? <laughs> Actually, it's on full. <laughs> it's not showing the gameplay right oh, now. Okay, that's fine. You guys want to hear a magic trick? <laughs> uh, uh, this is people gonna can be, keep up. Yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, I know what you're doing. Yeah. It's not like super great, but it'll be better it'll than do what, what you have. <laughs> Alright, there you go. Thank you. No one knows what we did. <laughs> Still mysterious. Oh, that's the <laughs> window left open. the window open. Super oh, wow. mysterious. <laughs> the most... I gotta go. <laughs> Alright, there we go. I yes. should go. <laughs> No, these guys should go. All right, sorry. Quoting Hamilton in the Star Trek streams. <laughs> Although I did, uh, Thomas did write me an original Hamilton song one time. I did. The, well, it was Star Wars. It was Star Wars, not Star Trek. Theme. Yeah. yeah, we should do some Star Trek Hamilton. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I could see uh, Picard doing uh, one last time. Do some sort of variation on that. Picard. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about this. I'm gonna have to think about this really hard. I feel like Kirk is more of a Hamiltonian figure than Picard, though. Yeah, but well, I'm thinking Picard for George Washington. That fits him better. Kirk fits like Hamilton better. Yeah. yeah. Fire everything! <laughs> oh, this shield is holding up much better. Can you the next thing you fire that? Can you spin around so people can see? Yes, like, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else interesting about. <laughs> Uh, well, you're also missing all your like engineering consoles and stuff, yeah, which is not, not really helpful. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, the ship was kind of interesting because the material in the show was really flat. So, you know, when we deal with stuff like that, we have to like walk a fine line of like, yeah, this is what it's supposed to look like, but it also needs to look a little better, a little like in line with the other stuff we have in the game. Well, especially for a model like, you know, if it's only seen briefly in passing, the, you mm. know, the modelers who made the real life model would have mm. made it so it looks good from that angle and right. from that distance and not right. necessarily focused on right. You know, a, making a bunch it of details everywhere. So Yeah. So I added I added a little paneling and stuff that wasn't in the actual model, but I hopefully people will agree that it looks good in the game. I mean, I remember that you asked me for my for, for mm. my advice and I, you know, I and I said, yeah, I think you need to increase the panel a little bit more so when you get close to the ship, there's a little bit more information to to read. Because mm -hmm. you don't just want to point into the flag. Right. We have we have the ability of using, you know, decent big textures. Right. So it's Oh, I lived! Yay. Hey, I lived through a single torpedo! Look at me and my mad skills. 
Uh, uh, somebody wants Chodak and the Unity device <laughs> put in game. That is beyond my track I don't think we can do that. I don't think we have a license for those. Okay. Um, for people who don't know, those are from the. Uh, um, probably one of the best Star Trek games ever made. Finally, um, PC game from the 90s. It actually has the entire cast. Uh, this is, oh, uh, nice. It's an it's an adventure game like oh, like really? old school like point and click like point you know go here and then use this item on this thing. It's a really good game. Um, and the Chodak were an ancient a race of alien like ancient aliens, and I think the Unity device um, was sort of like sort of like that thing from Forbidden Planet. Like it's just a machine that just gives you whatever you want. <laughs> so like like whatever you want. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think we can use. I, I don't think we can license yeah. stuff from another game. There was. There I was mean, some, we could probably ask, but it's likely that we won't get. Yeah, it was, I mean, the Chodak were weird because they looked like little Easter eggs that talked. They had like <laughs> Easter eggs with faces. Really? Like, like they were ovoid and. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I've uh, got to kind of look this up. There were, uh, there were really cool aliens in that. Uh, really interesting aliens in that game, though, um, because it was. All the game and yeah, a lot of yeah. Oh that. my god! Okay, I, they can't see this yet. I'm gonna make sure they can. <laughs> um, but there was this one planet you went to that was kind of tropical, rainforesty, and like the sentient aliens on that planet, I think, looked like baboons and or parrots and stuff. And it was uh, that's a Chodak, everybody. Yeah, Chodak. It, it actually looks like an avocado, like an <laughs> evil space avocado <laughs> with arms. They weren't <laughs> evil, I don't think. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't like super friendly, but yeah. Who was asking about that? Uh, let's see. It was um, there were two people. Some one person on Facebook, and somebody picked it up on Twitch. Uh, okay. Michael McKee really wanted it, and then yeah. uh, I don't think we actually know what a Chodak spaceship looks like, though. I'm sure we can um, find out. Hilariously, uh, in um, so there was a Final Unity on PC, and then uh, the same company made a.